Now in this question then we're given the horizontal wire here which is rough and a ring is attached and is being pulled by a force of 1.2 newtons. So let's start marking on the forces first of all. We've got a force in this direction, a tension of 1.2 newtons. We've got the weight of the ring. It has a mass of 0 0.25 kilograms so therefore the weight is going to be 0 0.25 g newtons acting downwards. There's going to be a normal contact force with the ring on the wire and that's going to act upwards so we'll put that in as say R newtons and because the ring is going to want to move to the right friction opposes motion and that's going to act towards the left so mark that in as friction and because friction is limiting this is going to equal mu times the normal contact force R and don't forget the units, newtons there. So that's the diagram showing all the forces acting on the ring. Now in part A then we're asked to find the normal contact force of the ring on the wire. So in this particular example that is going to be the R up there. So how are we going to do this? Well the way we're going to do it is to resolve. We're going to resolve upwards, taking upwards as positive. So looking at the resultant force on the ring in the upward direction what we're going to have is R is going to act upwards so all of R is going to act upwards so that would be R and then we've got the component of the 1.2 newtons here, the vertical component the one acting in this direction. Now because the 40 degrees is not contained in this angle in here it becomes a sine. So it's 1.2 sine 40 degrees and that's positive because it acts in the upward sense so that's 1.2 sine of 40 degrees. Moving round to this force all of the weight acts vertically down opposing this direction here so it will be minus 0.25g minus 0.25g and this is the resultant force remember the friction here is perpendicular to this vertical line so it has no effect in the vertical direction so this is the resultant force acting on the ring in the vertical sense and because it's in equilibrium it equals zero so all we need to do is just to rearrange this for R. So if I add 0.25G to both sides we would have 0.25G and if I was to subtract 1.2 sine 40 from both sides we would end up with this equation. Entering this on a calculator gives you 1.67865 and so on. And if we round this, say, to two significant figures, then we find that we get 1.7 newtons to two significant figures. So that is the normal contact force R. And that brings us to the end, then, of part A. Now in part B, we have to find the coefficient of friction. And so all I need to do here is just to resolve to the right. I could resolve to the left but I prefer to resolve to the right in problems where motion would be just about to take place. As we said the ring would move to the right and so I'm going to take that as being the positive direction. If I do that and we go around all the forces in turn starting with the 1.2 newtons. This is inclined at an angle to the horizontal direction so the component of the 1.2 newtons acting to the right is going to be 1.2 cosine 40 degrees. Cos 40 degrees because the angle is contained between the force and the direction that we want to go. So we have 1.2 cos 40 degrees as the component then of the 1.2 newtons. The weight 
that doesn't feature in the equation because it's perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. Coming round to the f, f equals mu r, this is opposing this direction and all of the mu r is in the horizontal sense so that will be minus mu times r. r is the 1.67865 value so we have that and then we have r but r is perpendicular again to the direction that we're resolving so this doesn't enter the equation so this is the resultant force horizontally on the ring and because it's just on the point of slipping it's not moving this resultant force would equal zero so rearranging this for mu if I was to add this term to both sides and then divide by 1.67865 you'd find that I get mu equals 1.2 cos 40 degrees all divided by the 1.67865 and so on and I'm expecting an answer that is going to be a naught point type answer so when you do that you get naught point five four seven six one and so on rounding this say to two significant figures is naught point five five to 2SF. No units for the coefficient of friction so just simply 0.55 then. And that brings us now to the end of this question.